we're continuing our story today um, with uh, the story of Jesus cursing the fig tree and then going on to cleanse the temple courts as we move forward in Easter week. And it says in Mark's gospel in chapter 11, verse 12, the next day as they were leaving Bethany, this was a place where Jesus had gone to spend the evening, the night after Palm Sunday. And Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. Ooh, harsh words from Jesus, which is not necessarily something that we would expect. But Jesus was not pulling too many punches at this point. Um, he knew that his time on earth was, was rapidly coming towards an end. And he had some points he wanted to make and some things he wanted to reveal to people. Um, and I imagine his adrenaline was, was lifting and he was beginning to think about what he, he had to face over the Easter period. You know, the fig trees are very important. And it's interesting that Mark puts this story in the Easter passage because a fig tree was often a representative of Israel, of the place, of the country, of the people. Um, and in Jeremiah 8 verse 13, it says this, I will take away their harvest, declares the Lord. This is what God was saying to Jeremiah. There will be no grapes on the vine. There will be no figs on the tree and their leaves will wither. So this was a prophetic uh, um, speech by Jesus about the tree. And he was saying that the time for um, Israel, as it had been, was coming to an end as well, because they hadn't listened to all that God had said and they were not living in the way God wanted them to live. And it says, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and been, began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. Jesus got a bit violent, which is something else we don't expect to see from Jesus. But this was the temple. This was the centre of the people's relationship with God. And it was being corrupted by all these things coming in that were not what they were supposed to be. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law did not like anything he was doing. They didn't like what he was teaching the people. They didn't like him at all. And it's interesting, isn't it, that they were very safe and comfortable in the Judaism, in the rules and regulations that they had actually created and created boundaries around them. And it's almost as though even God couldn't break through the boundaries. And Jesus was saying, nope, this is not what the temple is supposed to be. The temple is the center of prayer and a relationship with God. And what you've done is you've allowed it to be turned into a marketplace where um, the money changers were. Um, some would have been faithful, some would have been uh, corrupt, but this was just all happening in a place that should have been set just apart for prayer and their relationship with God. And it reflected what had happened in the nations. And Jesus wasn't having any of it anymore. He was going to make the prophetic point that this was the this was not what God wanted. And then it says uh, when evening came, he goes back out and he goes past the, the fig tree and the fig tree has done exactly what it said it would do in Jeremiah. All the leaves had withered. And, you know, sometimes if we come to these stories and we think about it with our reasoning, we say, well, Jesus was a bit strong there. Jesus wasn't doing uh, the, the gentle teaching and prophetic, but he knew that, that he was at the end of a ministry and he wanted to act strongly to stand by the things of God and to prophetically tell the people that the temple and the nation were in a bad way. But he was going to bring salvation. He was going to bring good things into the people's lives, but only by dying. And then thank God by resurrecting from the dead and defeating death. <laughs>